In any interview you attend, there's one question that you never miss out, and that is, tell me about yourself. In my experience as a HR expert, where we support organizations uh, who are looking to recruit our employees, I've interviewed over 1,000 professionals, and majority of them being senior professionals. So this is one question I know that stresses many professionals, even those senior professionals who've attended many interviews. So today I'm going to help you uh, on how to approach this question so that you can be able to convince the interviewer that you're the right person for the job and that you even know what you're talking about. And the reason why this question is very important, especially for you as a professional, is because it sets the tone of the interview. If you ask any manager who has ever interviewed or any HR manager who does interviews now and then, they'll tell you, if you get this question wrong, uh, the probability of you recovering later on in the interview is very, very slim. You know? So this in, uh, interview question of tell me about yourself, it sets the tone of the interview. So I'll give you tips on how to answer this question. And even you, I'll give you a sample, not just tips, but sample. How, if, you're in your, if I was in your position, how would I go about answering this question? But before I give you the tips, I want us to look at the reason why this question really um, stresses most of us. And why do we fear this question? Even if we know that, just like the question of how much do you want to be paid, we sure do expect this question and yet it stresses us. So the first reason why majority of the professionals are stressed by this question is you don't know what to focus on. We are wondering, Paminas has asked me, tell me about yourself. Do I talk about my professional life or do I talk about my personal life? Then the other reason why you might be getting uh, fearful when asked this question is because you don't know also how much to say. So whenever I'm coaching candidates, senior professionals, they ask me, Paminas, am I required to talk for one minute, two minutes? Do I go talking until five minutes are over? So again, that's also a main concern. And I'll help you to know how, how much time should you spend on this, you know? Uh, enough, when do you get to see that you've given enough information? And lastly, there's also the issue of, do I repeat what is in my CV? Do I just talk about what is in my CV? You know, I've even seen candidates who come to the interview room and they, they already have a copy of the CV. So do I refer to the CV or do I tell them whatever comes to my mind? So those are the challenges uh, you might be facing and uh, I'll help you answer those ones. I'll give you clarity on where you should be able to focus on. So having understood what stresses you when it comes to this interview, then the question is how do you approach this question? How, if you have an interview coming up next week, or even maybe you could be watching this because you, you have an interview coming up uh, in the next few hours, how do you answer this question? Now what you need to know is that just like any other presentation, you should always have an introduction, have a body, and have a conclusion. So for this question then, what is the introduction? For the introduction, you state your name, then you state your qualifications. So if I were in your shoes, I would say, thank you for inviting me for this interview. My name is Pamina Swainaina. I have a master's in human resource management. I also have a higher diploma from the Institute of Human Resource Management and I've also undertaken uh, some financial management courses so I'm a certified public accountant. So just state your name and then your qualification. You don't have to say where you got this qualification. You don't even have to state the year. Why? Because the person interviewing you, they already have um, that information in your CV and they've been looking at your CV. Then having stated that, then you go to the body. And the body, this is where you spend time. And what do you talk about? So there are two things to talk about here, or there are two approaches. Here you focus on your work experience. So you're talking about your work experience, there are two ways to go about it. So if you've been in one industry, one sector, so for example, let's say you've been in HR throughout, 
Then I will tell the interviewer, for the last 10 years I've been uh, working as a human resource management uh, professional and I have gained the following skills. I can talk about training, I can talk about recruitment, I can talk about performance management, I can talk about the labor laws. If it's an accountant, I'm interviewing a senior accountant, they can talk about budgeting, they can talk about costing, they can talk about um, financial analysis, they can talk about financial reporting, all those kind of things. Okay? So you are stating, you are summarizing the skills that you've gained with that, that, within that period of time. There's also the other aspect where you could have worked in different industries and they've all given you different experiences. So if that's the case, then for your body, for your experience, you talk now about the experience that is relevant to the job that you are being interviewed. So you can say, when I was working for this organization, for the three years I was there, I was involved in A, B, C, D. So those are the two approaches. Either, uh, either give a summary of your work experience, give a summary of your skill set, or pick the organizations that are relevant to the job that you are being interviewed. This is where you spend the time, this is where you expound as much as possible. And if you're talking about work experience, then you're talking about things you've done that are similar to the job that you are being interviewed, interviewed for. So before you even enter that interview room, you must have looked at the job description, the job advert, and really internalized it so that you really understand what they are looking for. So after you say that, then you conclude. So remember I said you have the introduction where you state your name and your qualification and then the body you talked about your work experience either in summary form or you broken it down to only those companies or institutions that are similar to what you are being interviewed and then you conclude and conclusion just means you thank the interviewer and if you have the confidence you can even tell them what interests them what interested you in this job that you are being interviewed for so answering that question is as simple as that. You don't need to go to a lot of details. Remember, this question is just but an eye opener. It's the same case. If you meet me in town and we haven't talked for the last three months, I'll ask you, oh, hi, how has been life? It doesn't mean now you tell me, Pamina, sit, watch a tukai kwa muti. Let me tell you, oh, this is what has been happening. My sister is doing this. Uh, these also are the challenges I'm facing. No, we normally say things are okay. Uh, I'm trying my best. It doesn't take more than a minute. But maybe if it's a closer friend, maybe you can give them more details. So it's the same case. Remember, this is a professional setting. This is just but an icebreaker. And the advantage of you spending a lot of your time talking about your experience in the body is that you set the tone. So if the interviewer picked one or two things that you said that are important to them because they're in their job description, then they can ask you, oh, Jane or John, please expound. You said that um, you used to deal with the government as one of the stakeholders. Tell us, how was that experience? Even the questions they're asking you, they're coming from the answers that you gave them. And that way it will be very easy for you to be able to even handle the interview. Uh, very well. So that's the way you handle it. So for those uh, who aren't paying attention, this is the way I would answer it. If someone was asking or was looking to interview me, let's say for a customer service job where we all know what it takes to be in customer service. So I would say thank you very much for inviting me for this interview. My name is Pamina Swainena. Uh, I'm a customer service professional. I've worked in customer service for the last 10 years. Within that period, I've worked for three institutions, and these are the skills that I've gained. I've been able to learn how to manage customers, uh, communication. I've also been able to do reporting. I generate various reports for my manager. Uh, I've also been able to learn how to handle different customers, customers who are happy, customers who may not be happy with our service. I'm also, I've also been able to learn how to be proactive and even be able to meet uh, the customer needs even before the customer has expressed those needs and the offices I've worked they've been very busy offices I've been able to I've been I've worked in places where I've handled 
uh, a minimum of 15 customers a day up to a call center where I used to make over 100 calls in a day. That has taught me patience. It has taught me to go the need to go that extra mile. I was attracted to this position because I can see you're a fast-growing organization. You are in the IT sector. You are well known, and the position where I am currently it doesn't give me that room, much room for growth. And that's why I'm here for the interview. Thank you for inviting me. And you just stop there. You don't just say I knew I grew up in Kitare. I'm the firstborn. Uh, we now moved to Mombasa. I mean, you don't put all those information. Keep it as simple. When you're done, just thank the interviewer and you stop. So over and above you knowing the format to take when answering this question, there's some things I would want you to always have in mind. And uh, number one, always keep it professional. So unless someone asks you something personal, then, for example, don't talk about family. But if I ask you, oh, do you have a family, then you can answer. So, but it shouldn't be part of your introduction. On to my second point. When someone counters you, they'll ask you something. What they are trying to do is just to see whether, had you rehearsed for this? Had you rehearsed your answers? You know, uh, for example, my colleague is telling me she went for an interview somewhere and she said the reason why she wants to work for this organization is because it's fast growing. And then the person who, is, who was interviewing said, so if you weren't fast growing, you wouldn't be looking for the opportunity. So it's not like this person really, really, really means that. But what they want to do is to see that, uh, or is your answer well thought out or you are just saying something you had um, uh, rehearsed and they want to see, uh, are you real on what you're talking about? And if that comes up, then be stand your ground, be polite, don't feel the pressure, don't feel the stress. And you can either diffuse the situation by making it uh, a joke, like you can tell them, yes, madam, you'll agree with me that we are looking to go uh, in one way or another. Or you can compliment them, you can tell them, yes, actually, you've been someone that I've been looking up to. And I know you put a lot of work for the organization to be where it is. And I believe you also want to work with people who are also ambitious. So that's why I would want to work with you. So either diffuse the situation or make it comical, make a right-hearted moment. Yeah? Don't start asking them, you, you, don't you want to grow? Isn't that why you are looking for other people to make your organization successful? So it's not, a, it's not an opportunity for you to have a back and forth with the interviewer. The other thing I would uh, encourage you to do is that please make sure that you get the introduction right. Make sure you get this answer right. Why? Because as I had said, it, it sets the tone for the rest of the interview. Anyone who has interviewed, they will tell you, we know the candidate will, whether a candidate is suitable for a job within the first one minute. So if you come, talk, and within one minute I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling you, then what happens is people you just interview you for the sake of it, but they've already ruled you out. And it's the same, you might be telling me, Paminas, one minute is not fair. I'll tell you it's very fair. Even for you, if you go and you're watching a YouTube video and it doesn't capture your attention, the first one minute, two minutes, what do you do? You go to another video or you go to other videos. So it's the same case with the interviews. That answer, you answer and tell me about yourself, will really determine the rest of the interview. And like I had said also, when you are done, it's not a chance now to look under the table or to start touching your hands under the table or to start fixing your dress. When you tell them, thank you for inviting me for the interview, either with a compliment or you tell them the reason that attracted you for this position, just keep quiet and maintain eye contact. That's it. And lastly, there's no set time. You can answer this question one minute, you can even answer 10 minutes. It just depends on the content that you have. As long as you're not repeating yourself, as long as you're not giving more than is required, saying more than is required, then I would say it's okay if you can take two minutes, three minutes. Obvious, if you are a fresh graduate, you I don't expect you to tell me about yourself when you take five minutes. But however, if you are a manager, I would expect you to have more information about who you are. So it depends 
on uh, where you are in life. And because this channel, we are more looking to empower the senior professionals. Uh, for me, I would say the sweet spot is between three minutes to five minutes. And you could also be paying uh, attention to the body language of the people who are interviewing you. If you see that they are starting to disconnect, they've had enough, then that's the time to conclude and then wait for them to ask you another question. So next time um, you're facing this question, remember the introduction, remember the body, and always conclude. Thank you for watching.